obviously always good to play at home. I was proud of our guys, uh, you know, the way we moved the ball. You know, 21 assists may be the high of the year, I believe. I can be off by one or two. Uh, still, you know, still, still got some work to do defensively, right? You know, playing with some urgency. We had probably eight to 10 breakdowns. Uh, we got outscored today in the post, uh, in the paint. Um, so a lot of good film to work on. Uh, the two guys at the podium today, I think, changed the game just with energy. Uh, and again, that's something that we've been working on as a team, energy, excitement, enthusiasm. So, you know, still working, very, very happy about the win, very uh, encouraged about the crowd coming out this holiday season. Um, I really like Columbia's team, I really do. Their young kids are gonna be very, very good. So uh, we gotta go on the road right now to play against uh, TCU, uh, one of the best teams in the country, one of the best rebounding teams in the country. Uh, so they'll definitely have our attention for sure. I'm going to hustle home and watch them as they're playing in the championship game against Iowa at 7 o'clock. But I'm, I'm very proud of the win. Uh, very proud of the two guys that are at the podium with me today. Because if those two guys didn't bring that level of energy today, we may be having a different story. So, um, you know, move forward. I uh, look forward to uh, prepping over the next couple of days uh, watching TCU. Sure. I don't know if you can coach it. I don't know if you can teach it. I think you have to talk about it. I think you got to show it a little bit. You know, what, what's energy, what's body language look like, what's conversation look like. You know, if, if you lack energy in sport, energy is like, energy is like a, an antibiotic. It really is. Like antibiotics work if, if you're sick. Energy works. It, it infuses a building, it infuses a teammate. It gives you uh, positive things to think about. You, you know, I think we have lapses with it. If we can consistently talk about it and build on it, you know, our program will get better. But right now, that's something that we're missing. Yeah, what, sorry, one more thing. What would you say about the two guys this week? You know, neither one started, but uh, they both finished in Boston. I, you need that status back. We're going to need a lot more than what we're doing right now in order to compete in the Big East. If we think we're going to come out with this lackluster energy over 40 minutes, we're going to find ourselves in trouble. So it's something that we can work on. And I'm not big on who starts. To me, players who start, you know, when you're young, when you're young, and, I, and everybody needs to listen to this. Everybody thinks because they start, they're good players. It's not who starts. It's who plays and who finishes. Starters, hey, congratulations, you're 6'4 from X state, and everybody claps for you, and you have your, you know. That don't mean. What means something, what means something is who plays, who's in the game, who's given energy. Very rare in my career that a, the starters finish the game. Very rare. Not saying it hasn't happened, but energy and enthusiasm, that's what sells, that's what wins. I'm, I'm trying, you know, and I, I, I have to, uh, I have to t definitely admit it's been tough given you're seeing so many different mistakes. And that's something that we tried to work on today was just my positive energy, which normally I am. But I, I, I admit it's, it's, been, it's been rough seeing what I'm seeing out there. So it's something that I have to work on. I'm not just going to talk to the players. I got to talk to myself. For the players, just speaking of this energy boost, you know, how much, you know, coming off the bench, how much is that even, I think that's easier for you to bring that energy to these two younger guys just because coming in, maybe going against them and a little bit tired and you can maybe spark it a little bit. Um, I feel like. When you're coming off the bench, you can kind of get a feel for the game. You can see what's going on. You can see um, things that some of the players or the team together just need to pick up on. And you can just, when you go in, you can feel that energy. You can feel the with the flow of the game and put your input in, see the small things and maybe fix that or pick your teammates up who, who are tired. So. Yeah, I was going to build off what Bree just said. Um, Sometimes we come in the game with our guys that are tied as well. So just our energy, be able to pick them up, um, have their back, and let them know that we're ready to play. I feel like it, as a collective, it just makes us better. And how's it going with trying to find that rotation of places? You guys still have an ongoing? It's coming. It's definitely coming. You know, again, when you have when you have different pieces, you're trying to see who can do what under what conditions. Obviously, it's very hard to have a ten man rotation the way we play and the way I coach. 
And again, the guys who are getting it done in practice and what you see over the course of guys when they're in the game, that's who you're kind of going to lean on. But I think that's definitely been a weakness right now. Normally by now, many teams have a set rotation. So, I mean, that's something that's definitely coming and we should see that in the very near future. Jared and I had a great conversation before the game today, you know, and just infusing energy and confidence in him. He's trying to learn a new role of which I think today he settled into. He needs to be a threat and he also needs to be a facilitator, right? When we get into some of these other games and we're getting ready to go into that Lions then on, on Wednesday, you know, he's, you know, we need him to be a first team all conference player as we continue to move forward. So uh, he's got to get his, you know, he's got to set the table for us, right? He's got to set the table. And great point guards have a good feel of when to go, when to push, when to get guys the ball in their spot. So um, I think he's getting better at that. Yeah, you know, the thing is you have to give, you have to give our men and, and players a chance to grow and develop. Um, will we have multiple ball handles on the floor? Absolutely. You know, um, and as these games get tougher, especially on road games, we're going to need ball handling decision makers and guys who and guys who can score. You know, I mean, I, I think these guys here, they know how to score and they know how to facilitate. So, you know, very rare in our career have we not had multiple ball handles on the floor once conference play starts. Yeah, we, you know, we try to beat the zone down the floor. And, um, you know, I, I don't know how much zone we're going to see moving forward, you know, over the next couple of games. We prepared for zone the last couple of days because that's what they do. The team's coming up. I don't, I don't know if Jamie Dixon's played one possession of zone in his 19 years as a head coach. You know, so I, I don't know how much we'll be seeing zone. And as we get ready to play a really hard place down at the University of Rhode Island, I don't know if Arch has played zone much in his career. So... Uh, you know, I bet their teams do play us, and I think we're prepared for it. It's taken some time. I mean, I think we're getting great shots. We had great shots today. So, we're going to need bench points. We're going to need production from everybody that comes out. You know, and again, these guys here were—I mean—were fantastic today. You know, I think Breed may have played 12 minutes, and he changed the entire game in a two-minute span. Game, set, match, right? I think he made three straight baskets. Game, set, match. And how much of that is his experience? He's been in a lot of basketball games. He's very comfortable playing here in the amp, right? Uh, he's come in, and, and I don't know if many of you remember this last year against Texas Tech. I don't think he played three or four minutes in the first half, even the second half, but came in and finished the game. That's trust. That's confidence from me. That's confidence from his teammates but give him all the credit in the world being emotionally and mentally ready for that. Also in a game against St. John's, I believe, or Xavier last year, triple overtime, him making five out of six free throws. He did miss the one to seal the game yet. Um, it was, you know, just got to be ready when your number's called. Uh, horrendous. We, we didn't guard well at all. That's, that's something that we have to work on. And I'd say that a little tongue in cheek. We did the right things to win the game. But if we're going to win high, high-level games, our defense has to increase by about 1,000%. Uh, he said he was OK. He said he was OK. Who's that? They won? Congratulations. Um, I, I like your energy. Do you get like that when the Friars score? Or, or, or is that because it's your alma mater? But, but, but your heart is in Rhode Island, Kevin. It's in Rhode Island. Okay, just I just want to stop you right there, baby. Oh, okay. All right. Next, next, next Friar question. I can give two dams about what's going on in another place. His shoulder is, you know, it popped out, so we'll see. You know what I mean? I mean, hopefully he's a tough kid. He'll be fine. Um, it's been pretty smooth, honestly. Like probably the first couple of games, there's a little adjustment, but now my coaches have my coaches give me confidence. My players or my teammates give me confidence, and now I'm just feel like I'm just hooping right now. I'm um, having fun. And I feel like I've been prepared since like coming out of high school. I went to a great high school, 
And now I'm just having fun playing basketball and just competing. Hey, Thanks, guys.